Once you've done that cyclical up and down, up and down, trying everything, I had someone say to me, I said, oh, I'm doing keto. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna lose a lot of weight. And they said to me, um, that's what you always say. Yeah. And I think for me, that was a big trigger too. Just having someone to challenge me to say, you can't do it. You mm. never do it. You always say you're going to lose weight, you know? Like my whole, I've had a scale that I step on and it Wi-Fi sends it. It's like this, you know, until I start keto and it's hmm. down. And so I don't know if you can fast track that point. It's like yeah. when you talk to someone who's an alcoholic or a drug addict, I mean, a food addict. That's what I was, 100%. And how do you get to the point where you want it so much for yourself that you're willing to to forego the birthday cake and forego the pieces of pizza and you're not drinking beer with all your friends. It's, it's so hard. It's a huge adjustment to your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We have street parties. I can't eat anything. You yeah. know, I go to work events. I can't eat anything. And I'm okay with that. You don't feel left out or anything. You just go through the motions. No, and I think you just figure out that you and your health and what you have going on. I mean, for me, of course, I have a huge following that's gonna look to me and like, if what am I gonna do if I go to my street party and I'm like, don't ask people what they put in their food to make it. I don't feel bad about that anymore. Yeah. We got a pizza at Boston Pizza the other day and we it was an extra large pizza and we scraped all the toppings off and sent the whole thing back. And even after doing keto for 16 months, I'm like, the lady's like, was there something wrong with the pizza? And it's like, no, it's just, this is how we do it. friend, welcome back. That was Joanna Wilcox. And today we're going to learn how she lost over 65 pounds and completely transformed her life with a low carb, high fat ketogenic style diet and exercise. And I want to underscore exercise because she will tell you in this short interview, that was a huge shift along with keto. Keto really helped with the cravings, with the mood, with the satiety and other things. But we talk about emotional eating, we talk about emotional triggers for food and addictions, behavioral addictions. It's an awesome discussion brought to you by Perfect Keto, the maker of high quality exogenous ketones and MCT oil powder products to support your healthy ketogenic diet and lifestyle. They have a new product that our family absolutely loves. We just got this the other day and it's almost out. It's called Salted Caramel MCT Oil Powder. We put this in our coffee. I like to use this pre-workout. Um, now, obviously, it's good to get into ketosis through fasting, through exercise, and a healthy diet, but the MCT oil powder and exogenous ketones can help you when you're exercising or when you're just starting out and making sweeping lifestyle changes. So if you go to perfectketo.com forward slash H-I-H, you can save $10 off your first order and get a healthy discount as well. So please support their mission. I know the owner, I know the raw material vendors, I know the manufacturer. These guys are very ethical, moral, they make great products, and what's on the label is in the bottle. So again, to save on these high quality products, you can go to perfectketo.com forward slash H-I-H. H-I-H is in high intensity health. So let's dive back into it with Joanna. Welcome back to another video. It's Mike Mutzel. Thanks so much for showing up and tuning in. We are in Joanna's house. She is uh, found on social media at Keto in Canada. Yeah. I like that. It has like a nice ring to it. I know. I don't know where it came from. Just, Just popped into my head one day and luckily it didn't exist. There's lots of Instagram names that are taken. Yeah, already. I know. It's tough. You gotta, like, if you got on early, I think in like 09 or I don't know when Instagram came out, 2010 or something. I'd have Joanna, just Joanna. Yeah. Would be nice. Some people, uh, I follow a football player, Earl Thomas, and he's just Earl. So, lucky guy. Anyway, so today we're gonna talk about your transformation. I think it's really profound. Um, you've been keto for 16 months yep. now. Um, maybe let's just go back a little bit. Like, how did you first discover keto? Whoa. Yeah, it was a really weird way for me. I've done all the diets. Mm -hmm. I've done calories in, calories out. I tried Weight Watchers, not offline, but online. What else did I do? Beach Body, you know, the 21 day fix, and then have all those little containers. Yeah. And, and what happened is, I was trying, you know, you watch um, The Biggest Loser, mm -hmm. and they'll say, until you figure out why you have your issues that you do, you're never really going to lose the weight or get where you want to be. So I decided to go to a counselor here in town. Um, I live in Woodstock, Ontario, and because I had an emotional eating issue, mm. little things would happen in my life and I would eat. Like someone we, we love would pass away and it was like 10 pounds was added on. Huh. Yeah, I had a miscarriage before my daughter, 10 pounds was added on. It was like I could never... When I dealt with those emotional situations, that was my coping mechanism. It's like, oh, I feel better now that I ate an entire bag of potato chips. <laughs> so I decided to go to uh, an emotional eating counselor here in town. And the most ridiculous thing happened is that she, she was like, I'm not going to tell you how to eat. But that's exactly what she did. 
Hmm. She was like, you're just eating too many carbs. Hmm. She said to me, um, society says it's okay to eat a sandwich for lunch. She's like, it's not okay to eat a sandwich for lunch. And she kind of talked about how you drive down the street and everywhere you look, it's sandwiches and burgers and french fries and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so she wanted me to go home and look in, you know, at what I was eating and start writing down the carb amounts. Mm. And I got so mad, like the first meal, because she said, I want you to be down like under 20 carbs a day. Mm. And my yogurt had like 16 or 18 carbs in it. So I got really mad at her and I was like, I'm not finishing this homework assignment. This is crap. And that's when I started Beachbody and I walked in there the next day. I'm like, I'm good. I'm doing the 21 day fix and I'm going to lose weight. And she just looked at me and was like, it's not going to work. And I was so mad. I was like, I'm trying to change my life here. Yeah. And you're just telling me I've got to stop eating carbs. But what happened is I did the workouts, not the food from the beach body she was completely right um it didn't work for me but what it did do is it started me like googling i just started looking at what is this low carb i've heard of atkins um and i ended up going to reddit and reading about and looking at so many pictures of people's before and afters and this one girl it was probably like six weeks of looking one girl posted a picture there and it changed my whole trajectory of the next 16 months of my life. She lost 30 pounds in eight weeks and I had a trip to Vegas coming up and I'm like, well, if she can do it, I can, I can do, do it. it. Too. Yeah. It was crazy. And so I had done all the research and I woke up, it was a Thursday, it was December 1st. And I said, I'm just not putting anything in my mouth that isn't keto anymore, isn't low carb. I'm gonna track what I eat. I'm gonna stick to my net carbs and I'm gonna go from there, mm. so it was really cool. And then how much total weight have you lost since then? Since then, I lost 60 pounds. Good for so you. So the first six months, I lost 45 pounds. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I was really lucky. Every time I did my weekly weigh-ins, I documented all of it um, on my Instagram. Every time I would weigh in, there was, um, it was like a drop, a drop, again, drop. And I think it kind of annoyed some people yeah. <laughs> because here I was having all the success, like why is Joanna losing weight every single week and I'm not? And then the next six months, it took me six more months to lose 15 pounds. Hmm. So I think sometimes for people, it just comes off really fast in the beginning. Other people, they start slow and then they ramp up. And um, I'm still keto today. I'm still following the exact same plan I did day one, basically. Yeah. Are you doing testing blood ketones or blood glucose or how do you? I'm not. Yeah. So that's sort of one of the things I'm curious to do. In my mind, it's always been like if you're 20 net carbs or less, your keto. Mm -hmm. So why do I need to know how much in ketosis I am? Right. Um, or I did test my blood, I mean my, not my blood, my urine in the beginning because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'm trying to do this. Apparently I can pee on the stick and it'll yeah, tell me if I'm in it. It's a good motivator. Mm -hmm. um, but then it just dies off. And then I think you actually stop reading on them. Like yeah. exactly. Once you become more fat adapted, <clears throat> exactly. It does. It's not as yeah. accurate. Yeah. yeah. So that if I peed on it today, it'd probably tell me it wasn't, but I know I haven't eaten a lot of carbs or anything. Yeah. So it's impossible for me not to be. Interesting. Um, but I definitely want to explore that a little bit more, but, but the emotional eating thing, I think let's unpack that a little bit because a lot of us, mm -hmm. um, you know, cope with life stressors via food. Um, and so this was like a week, I, just to, so I can clarify, like a week long binge or something bad would happen and it was like two days or one meal, like. Yeah, so I was never a binge eater. Okay. I would never come home and eat like six bowls of cereal or anything like that. Um, it would just be, I would do, like I'd grab chips from the cupboard mm -hmm. and pour them in a bowl for portion control. And then it's two or three trips to like refill it. Yeah. And you feel like you have zero control when it comes to what you're eating. You're just making bad choices. I remember I would go to work. I would actually like feel bad because I would feel like left out at work for some reason. And I would go to Burger King and I would get a giant, I would get like a chicken burger with like extra mayo. And then I would get a giant fries and a giant diet. I had drink diet pop. I still do, but a giant diet pop. And I would sit there in my car and just eat it and listen to podcasts about keto and like how I could do that and change my life. But like here I was feeling bad and just eating. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know really how keto helped me with that. It's weird. I think just the fact that I don't have those same hunger cues, my blood sugar wasn't going up and down, sending that like signal to me that I have to eat. And I just knew, the lady had said to me, you know, if you are going to eat something based on an emotional response, eat something low carb. So it was like grabbing a pepperoni stick or something like that. Just something I knew that I couldn't really cause a lot of 
damage with. Yeah. yeah, interesting. What tips would you offer for people? I mean, that's a great one. If you're going to have a binge or whatever, um, or emotionally in that regard, like go Wrap low carb. Right but food. what what are some other tips? I mean, because I, you know, we I've been there too, like with cashews. I love cashews, and mm. sometimes I'm like, did I just eat like three handfuls of cashews? Right. So, um, what are some other cues to get people like deep breathing beforehand? Go for a walk. Um, grat like, what would you offer to someone who's experiencing that now? Yeah, it's one of those things where you really have to look inside yourself and decide what you what you want. Mm -hmm. For me, one of the things I do now, because I do sometimes still have those moments, I think more so now that I've lost a lot of the weight, when those goals are not in the forefront so much. I mean, I've been doing weigh-ins since December, pretty much weighing in the exact same, and putting them on YouTube and being like, oh, I'm still the same weight, I'm still the same weight, I'm still the same weight. Um, but definitely for me, looking at where I've come from, it's really easy to forget how far you've actually changed your life. So when you look back at like, okay, I don't want to go back there. Um, again, finding those low carb versions of the things that you're wanting to eat is a great tip. Um, you know, a lot of people think you can't have desserts or, mm -hmm. I don't know why, they just feel like I need, I get questions all the time. People are like, I just want something sweet. Like there's so many sweet things you can yeah. eat when you're keto. Um, but yeah, definitely exercising takes your mind off doing that. I'm not a, over exerciser by any means, but I have a dog, taking the dog for a walk, have, doing some self care. Okay, yeah. I think I'll paint my nails instead, or sure. I'll go have a nice bath, or we've got a hot tub. So instead of eating in, I don't watch a lot of TV these days, so that was probably a trigger before, just like that boredom eating. So I try to find other ways to occupy my time. Yeah, and then your accountability partner, sort of, you have many accountability oh partners, but Instagram. So I think. I, and that's one of the things that I like to teach people in our members area is always just like um, make the private public, right? So you did your weigh-ins. A lot of people keep that close to the chest because they're embarrassed about it, but you just put it out there. I was so embarrassed. Yeah? I was so embarrassed. And I just said it was that rock bottom moment. And I was like, here's me in my bathroom. Here, I'm like, and I even say in the video, you can scroll back to the very first video on my on my Instagram, it's there. And it's just me saying like, my back hurts, I'm not happy with myself, I'm embarrassed, I'm not taking care of myself, but I'm gonna change. And even the next video is like, I'm gonna try my hardest to change. What I should have been said, like, I'm gonna change. And that's exactly what I did. And it's really cool too, because you see people that um, sort of fell off. I mean, there's, that happens a lot with keto Instagrams, that people will follow you and you can follow part of their journey and then they stop. And then I've had people come back like a year later and they're like, oh my God, you're still doing it. Mm -hmm. And they see like, Joanna kept going. Why didn't I keep going? Like yeah. I should have, I should have stuck with it. But that accountability to every day, like I go on Instagram stories even, and I show what I'm eating and I talk about what's going on or what I'm emotionally feeling to have that outlet has been priceless for me. Because mm -hmm. anyone can do it. Right. You don't it's need free. to have 80,000 followers to share your opinion online on the internet or to say hey today was a tough day mm -hmm. because you might get 10 people that view that story and someone else says hey i had a tough day too here's what i did to get through it mm -hmm. so the fact that there's this keto community online was priceless to me yeah i it's invaluable i would tell anyone who was doing it to go there and yes it was always public and i was afraid <laughs> of people to find it and the first person that's that followed me that i knew i was like Oh, oh my gosh. How did they find this? Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I was, I think I was like 30 or 40 days in and I was like, you've lost 15 pounds. Like, mm -hmm. be proud of it. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You're changing your life for the better. And now all those people are like doing keto and you know, mm -hmm. they've been inspired by me to do it. And if I never would have shared my story, there's a number of people whose lives wouldn't be changed. Like I get messages daily from people who say, I just came across your before and after just by chance. I didn't even know about keto and now I've lost 50 pounds. And so the fact that I, now I can walk through my days and know that I've made an impact for other people just by sharing my day-to-day -day story, mm -hmm. is, is, it's crazy. And to think that you know anyone can do that, anyone who's watching this right now right. can do the same. And it doesn't need to be 100 people that they've affected, but even one person, Yeah. you know? Totally. Yeah, it's really I, cool. I think that, that message can transcend into business and life and anything if we just think about like 
uh, we get wrapped up into like our, our own self-centered kind of, you know, and insecurities and things like that. But if we focus on helping other people, yeah. that, you know, whether it's making more money in your business so that you can serve your community or uh, eating, making better, I think, like pertinent to this conversation, lifestyle and health choices, nutrition choice, choices, because it's affecting your own physique, your children, your energy, your, your ability to be, you know, a great business owner, marketing yeah. person, mother, right. etc. cetera. Um, so that's a wonderful tip, kind of making the private public and things like that. And then, but the amount of time that it takes to use Instagram, you, you kind of were saying like it does take a lot of time. Um, yeah. Do you batch some of the sharing? Like you just you're cooking real quick and then. So I don't batch. Yeah. It's I should batch, but I don't. Um, everything I do on Instagram is sort of in the moment. I don't plan out my content at all. I need to. It's one of those things where I say like, okay, I got to think about what does everyone want to know about, and then I will plan it out and I'll take pictures beforehand and put it out, but mm -hmm. it doesn't end like that. Yesterday I posted three pictures of me standing in front of my mirror because that's where I was in that moment and I try to post every day and my stories aren't planned. It's yeah. literally documenting my day to day. If we're at speech therapy with my son, I share that and then people connect with me about that. So oh, cool. it's gone from just being keto to everything pretty much else. everything. Awesome. People want to know what you're wearing and who does your hair and how to curl it and yeah, all, all that, that stuff. Sort of stuff. So yeah. I made a YouTube video about that and I spent a lot of time responding to questions. Um, I do have a beginner's guide that I sell through my Instagram. So I, you know, I work with people in a private Facebook group about that. Oh, cool. I'm always answering questions, running macros for people, supporting people mm -hmm. on their journey. And it's been life changing for me. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that tracking macros is a nice first step for people that are new to this? I think it's always a nice step mm -hmm. because for me, um, I, I use my fitness pal to track and even now, so after a year losing 60 pounds, now that I'm into like my fitness side of my journey, I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I know what I'm eating. I know if I go to Pita Pet and grab a salad, it's this many net carbs and I can kind of keep track of that. And I, and I do sometimes have days where I'm not logging everything, mm -hmm. but the problem I have now is I'm trying to eat enough to make sure my muscles are growing through my workouts. And so I can't just eat what I want yeah. or not pay attention to it because then if I'm not eating enough, I'm not going to reach that next goal that I've set for myself. Mm -hmm. And what is that? Is that a strength goal or is that? Yeah. So I think part of it is like image. So when I look in the mirror, am I seeing like, am I seeing my, is this traps a trap? Yeah. I'm, I'm really bad with what everything's called. Mm -hmm. Even the gym machines and the workouts I do, I'm always asking my husband, but you know, I want the nice rounded shoulders and I want this and I've got goals to do like a three minute handstand. I'm a big handstand person. Nice. I want to do the, walk or against the, I can walk, yeah. but I want to be able to do like, it's just a standard three minute handstand. I want to do a one arm handstand. Mm. So I practice like touching my shoulders nice. and, um, my trainer does stuff with me where mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I just did seven minutes of burpees. So we counted how many burpees I did. So I did 71. I'd like to get to 107 minutes, um, things like that. He yeah. sets little goals. And just even I do yoga sometimes. And I just noticed I've been going for four months now to the gym. Mm -hmm. And I was doing like a chaturanga, like a flow. Yeah. And in the past, when I would go from a plank to the ground, it was a soft landing. You know, mm -hmm. I would thump down, but this time I could actually control mm -hmm. my body going down. And so I'm definitely starting to notice strength changes for me. It's awesome. But yeah, I want to be able to do cool things I never thought I could do. Yeah. Like a pull up. Or, that is so great. Yeah. Um, did you have an athletic background growing up? No. Okay. So no, this is zero. awesome. This is really cool. Uh, and I, what I love about this is because there's a couple different, you know, camps within the whole keto community. Um, just, you know, kind of the macro camp. There's a lot of people that are just fasting and you're implementing time restricted feeding and exercise in yes. addition to the macros. And I love that because, and this is a, a theory that I have and I just, you know, feel free to botch it up, but I feel like you diet can get you to a certain point, but if you're not moving your body, you're not going to get to that next level. That's just my, oh, yeah. do you, what do you agree with that? Yeah. hundred mm -hmm. percent. Like how, how are you ever going to gain mu like muscle strength if you're not breaking down the muscle and rebuilding it? Right? Yeah. Um, and I think too, like for me, diet got me so far where I was slim, but I still didn't like the way I looked. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll never like the way I look. I mean, you're going to have people that are like bodybuilders who have huge muscles and they'll look in the mirror and be like, oh, but this one ab mm -hmm. is a little bit less than this one. Or, you know, I don't want to get to that extreme, point, extreme yeah. like where I'm doing bikini body competitions, although you never say never. That's not really in my vision right now of where I want to go. I just want to be able to do really cool stuff and share it with people and kind of show people that it's that it's possible for them to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's the most amazing thing. Like I'm a busy mom. I've got two kids, a full-time job, and 
I'm doing this other stuff on the side, sharing this journey. I've got the side business. I'm still making time for the gym. I take my kids with me. Awesome. I was there 8 a.m. Saturday morning with both kids in tow. And a lot of people have excuses. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to show that like, you can work out the three times a week and you can eat keto as a lifestyle and you can continue to do it into maintenance. And here's where I started and here's where I am now. And just continuously sharing that journey with people. Yeah, That's it's really, really fun. Now the energy that you have now that you're keto and leaner, oh uh, yeah. could you imagine two and a half years ago being at the gym at eight in the morning on a Saturday with your Never. kids? I mean, cause you wouldn't have had that energy, the robustness. Oh my God. I, I have actually said in the past, I would never have a trainer. Mm. Not like a hundred percent never. Even when I was younger, I would play on a basketball team like at school and we had a coach and like I was constantly fighting with them over mm -hmm. them telling me what to do. I don't really like being told what to do. So it's always like my way or the highway sort of. Mm -hmm. if that's, that's not really fair. But for me to say that, it's just I, especially when a physical capacity, I don't like being pushed yeah. to do things, anything. I don't think most people do. But what happened after I was a year of keto, I kind of got to the point where I was like, well, what's next? Mm -hmm. And I was excited to change my body in a different way. It's like, if I was capable of doing this, maybe I'm capable of doing that. And now it's like priceless. Like a lot of us, um, especially women, I don't know, you walk into a gym and it's very intimidating and there's all these machines and you have no idea how to use them. And you know, with Nate, I can go in there and I know he's correcting my form because I'm kind of a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm golfing, I think of like the eight different steps I need to do to swing the ball, right? And I'll never get it right. Um, and I do that now at the gym with him just doing like a push press. Okay, I've got to like lift it a certain way and then move my head and mm -hmm. it's complicated. But having his support has made me know that I wasn't wasting any time. When I'm in that gym for 45 minutes with him, my positioning's right. He knows how much I should be lifting. Because if I went by myself, I'd probably lift way less, mm -hmm. you know, just... I've got him to spot me. So it's been priceless. And I was like napping. My husband and I would like trade off naps. <laughs> we would say, yes, stuff, like yeah. it's like, okay, well I did this with the kids last time. And now it's like, we're both keto and there's no napping going on. You know, we're both a team. We're doing the laundry, we're cleaning the house. And it's, you know, we're functioning better as a family. Like our kids aren't keto, but both of us are luckily. And he, and that was no pressure. He just joined it with me, um, luckily. so. I've noticed a huge difference just in our overall energy levels and and yeah the fact just the fact that I go to a trainer right now yeah. is like it's a miracle to me that I would even go and do that so um, it's hard to do on your own but when you have that scheduled appointment to go meet with someone it's priceless it's totally. worth its weight it's your health right yeah and I find like so I work with a trainer too I've been lifting since I was 15 years old wow. so I know all the moves and all that sort of stuff but, yeah, but you, you can always learn more and that's again we talked about using Instagram as the accountability partner so your trainer can be yes. your accountability partner and I think it's good to always work with an expert you know but what comes up is sometimes people don't have money they don't have the resources mm -hmm. so what would you say to them um, obviously there's uh, Instagram and YouTube tons of tutorials for free oh my god um, yes YouTube yeah. has so many at-home workouts a lot of the workouts that my trainer even puts me through are ones that you can do at home yeah. so what I save I share them on my Instagram I say save this and a lot of people say that like I love that I can do this workout at home and so if you Google like or go on YouTube look at at-home workouts there's so many of them and they're all body you know body strength ones and maybe that's where you need to start and then maybe you get to a point where you are at a certain level of fitness where it's worth it to you to maybe not eat out so much mm -hmm. because you want to put your money into some other avenue yeah, such as training point. or your health right like i find that a lot of people say i can't afford it and yes there are definitely people that can't afford it and you know my husband and i are very lucky to have you know an above average income um to be able to do those types of things but there is a lot of excuses out there i find um and trainers are very expensive but you know, maybe look outside, like look for people who are beginning mm -hmm. trainers, Starting like they're, they're new ones, they're not at Good Life, like the Good Life is a big gym here, mm -hmm. but they charge you like a lot, a lot of money there. Look for the people that have their independent gyms, their garage gyms, the people that have some education in it and are willing to put the time in. Yeah. That's what I did in college. I went to people's homes and trained them in their homes. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but I got, as a trainer, I got frustrated with that because people just wanted to talk, not actually do the working out. Oh, and so I was like, they want well, a counselor. Yeah, they yeah. just want someone to ba you know, you know, banter with. And I thought, gosh, this is, there's got to be more there. So I went into a gym. But anyway, um, 
So that's really important. So, so moving physical fitness, you know, having those goals is as important as like following your macros. I have to now because yeah. like I've done everything else. Like you can't just keep losing weight when mm -hmm. you get to a certain point. It's like, okay, I have five more pounds to lose, but now what? Yeah. If, if you're not setting goals in life, I think that's it's kind of boring. Right. You know, I think it's always fun to like aim for the next thing, whether it is to just be able to do a handstand, yeah. do something physical, set one physical goal and aim to reach it. And you'd be surprised how fast you get there. Totally. Yeah. Really awesome stuff. Let's go through the four um, hierarchies, if you will, or paradigms of change and, and highlight on that emotional connection. We're kind of going back a little bit, but yeah. I think that's important for people. Um, and maybe if you can fast track, so maybe what are those four? I'm not describing it properly. Yeah, so this actually I got from Dr. Phil. Mm. I was watching, and I don't get a lot, and it was all about a drug addict. The, the show was not about emotional eating at all. Mm -hmm. But what he touched on was the four stages for readiness for change. Um, and I ended up creating a YouTube video on it because it was so profound to me. I remember sharing it on my Instagram. Then I created my own video for YouTube because it talked about... Uh, I get a lot of people that write me all the time and say, oh, I want to lose weight or I've got 50 pounds to lose. And um, I always ask them and I send the video out constantly because I say, well, what stage are you at? How ready are you really to change? And the first stage of that is that you're getting it from a, an authority figure, someone in your life that has an authority. It's like almost like your teacher is saying you need to do this. Mm. In this state, it's you, generally your doctor is saying, you're pre-diabetic, you need to lose weight, your cholesterol is too high, your blood work came back, um, you need to change your life. And they'll leave and they'll make small changes for like a couple weeks because their doctor told them to, but then they know they don't go back to their doctor till you know, another 350 days or mm -hmm. whatever, till they see him a year from now. And then they're gonna see that there's a lot more damage done when they get there because they'll quit and they'll go back to their old habits. Um, the second phase is that someone close to you is telling you that you need to lose weight, whether that's your spouse or let's say all your girlfriends are really skinny and then you're the one that's overweight and they're making comments like, well, why don't you just try this diet or why don't you do that? And then you feel guilty and you feel bad about yourself. So you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your husband because he wants to find you more attractive or you're doing it for your group of girlfriends so you can fit more into that group. Um, and that's not gonna work yeah. either. If you're doing it for the wrong reasons, if you're doing it for any of those first two, um, thirdly is when you have, um, you start noticing the physical effects of it. So, um, you are running up the stairs and you're out of breath or you're trying to play with your kids and like your back hurts and you're like, Oh God, or you're putting on the pair of pants and mm. you're like, Oh no, they don't I'm having to size up again. Yeah. <laughs> this is not good. And that is like when you start to physically notice it and you will start to make changes in that place. But if you're not emotionally ready, to make those changes, you will always fall back. You might lose the 15, 20 pounds and feel momentarily happy and content with where you've gotten yourself to, but then you will eventually gain the weight back. Stage four is like your rock bottom. Like I'm not gonna take this behavior from myself for one more second of one more minute of one more day. I'm done. I'm done looking like this. I'm done feeling like this. Um, that's where it's like really in your heart, in your mm -hmm. core, you're done. And I, for sure, that's where I got. I was done feeling unattractive. I was done having back pain. I was done sizing up my clothes. I was just like, who have I become? Like, I couldn't even recognize myself looking in the mirror. When I look back at old pictures of myself, I just see so much sadness. Like, even in my eyes, it's so sad to look back and be like, who was that person? And how did I even get to that point? Um, and so I had hit that stage four. I physically noticed the changes and I emotionally wanted it. I knew I was at a fork in the road. That's mm -hmm. where you're always at. You're at a place where I could continue to eat the way that I was eating and I was going to gain another 20, 30, 40 pounds. I'm like, or I could turn it around and I could start changing my life. When I was doing the beach body, some lady said to me, like, I'm 60 years old and I'm doing this now. She said, Don't wait till you're 60 years old. And I never forgot because here I was, I was 32 years old and I'm in like my prime and I should be enjoying my life. So that really sunk in for me. Yeah, having that little remark from her. Yeah. How could you fast track getting to that emotional readiness for change? I mean, if someone right now is like, they've maybe hit rock bottom, they've done a lot of different diet cycling, like um, thinking about people you care about, thinking about your kids, like what, is there anything that would like circumvent the process a little bit? And, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I feel it's like, it comes once you've done that cyclical up and down, up and down, trying everything. I had someone say to me, I said, oh, I'm doing keto. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna like I'm gonna lose a lot of weight and they said to me um, that's what you always say yeah and I think for me that was a big trigger too just having someone to challenge me to say you can't do it you mm. never do it you always say you're gonna lose weight you know like my whole I've had a scale that I step on and it Wi-Fi sends it mm. it's like this you know until I start keto and it's mm. down and so I don't know if you can fast track that point. It's like yeah. when you talk to someone who's an alcoholic or a drug addict, I mean, a food addict, that's what I was a hundred percent. And how do you get to the point where you want it so much for yourself that you're willing to, to forego the birthday cake and forego the pieces of pizza and you're not drinking beer with all your friends. It's, it's so hard. It's a huge adjustment to your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We have street parties. I can't eat anything. You yeah. know, I go to work events. I can't eat anything. And I'm okay with that. You don't because feel left out or anything. You just go through the motions. No, and I think you just figure out that you and your health and what you have going on. I mean, for me, of course, I have a huge following that's going to look to me. And like, mm. if what am I going to do if I go to my street party and I'm like, don't ask people what they put in their food to make it. I don't feel bad about that anymore. Yeah. We got a pizza at Boston Pizza the other day and we, it was an extra large pizza and we scraped all the toppings off and sent the whole thing back. And even after doing keto for 16 months, I'm like, the lady's like, was there something wrong mm -hmm. with the pizza? And it's like, no, it's just, this is how we do it. Yeah. You know, and it's, you have to become really comfortable in yourself when you live sort of an alternative diet lifestyle. People call me keto. Like that's my nickname. Oh, really? Hey, keto, cool. come here. Yeah. Because that's just how they, it's like, it's become a part of who I Your am. Your identity almost My has identity changed. at yeah. this point. Yeah. And I, I get people that ask me all the time. They say, do you, are you going to be keto forever? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, forever is a really long time. Like I don't see anyone committing to anything forever. Yeah. Um, but like I have seen no foreseeable future of me stopping. Right. You no know? rashes, no migraines. I mean, we, we, you hear different things. People complain about, uh, particularly women. I, I hear this and you may hear it too. You know, yeah. women that start keto, they get a rash where their menstrual cycle changes. Oh, I got so the get, rash. Okay. I got, I got all that. Yeah. Um, right all here, all up here. And it was burning. I wanted to scratch through my chest. Wow. It was so bad. And I ended up going to emerge and I've got two male doctors. And I'm like, tell me what is going on. And they are just like, well, it's contact dermatitis. Hmm. You got, I'm like, what is contacting my bra line besides my bra that I've been wearing for the past year? Mm -hmm. You know, like nothing had changed, but you look it up online, the keto rash is that mirrored image. It's like, like, what if it goes up to my face? And there's a lot of things that can come along with keto. I did get a cream as like a beta derm cream that they prescribed and it did, it took like six weeks for hmm. it to fully go away. And what was it? I mean, from a mechanistic standpoint, you know, what, what's the reason for the rash? I haven't looked into it. I don't know. Is it hormonal Some people say it can be detox? sweat, hmm. like where the sweat comes out and the ketones irritate the skin. I don't know. Hmm. I need to look more into that. Yeah, there's not a, I don't have a lot of information. I just know that that was what worked for me. And people ask me all the time, what happened? I say, see your doctor, yeah. you know? Um, a lot of people get hair loss. And luckily I didn't, I have like a little bit of like tiny little fly hairs, but mm -hmm. I don't think that that personally affected me luckily. But I remember when I got the rash, I was day 30. Oh, okay. And I was deep at that point. I was like in tears because it all said like eat carbs if you want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to eat carbs. Yeah, you're like, I've made it this I'm far. Why would I want to? I'm doing keto now. This is like, I'm dedicated to this. I'm not getting sidetracked. So mm -hmm. yeah. And that was, I think I was 30 days in no cheat meals or whatever. And now I'm almost 500. Nice. That's awesome. And I was a French fry person. person. That was your like oh, go-to. Yeah. Hey? Potato chips, French yeah. fries. So a lot, you know, sometimes I drive by Wendy's or McDonald's and the parking lot is filled with people. Yeah. And I think to myself, cause I've been eating clean. Like it's just one of these things I'm inherently just naturally mm -hmm. gravitated towards when I was very young. Um, and I couldn't imagine like eating that food. It must make you feel terrible, but you highlighted on food addictions. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, out of the percentage, so there's a lot of people that have a lot of weight to lose, like 70% of North Americans or something right. in the adults, right? Is a lot of, there's a lot of stress or sleep. There's all these factors. But is food addictions, if you could characterize a big subset of those people, would you say that is a big part of it? Is like uh, people are just addicted to like junk food? Oh my God, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. if you just think about it, and like my doctor had said this to me once. He said, we all have our vices. We all have our ways of struggling with difficult things in our life. And some people that's alcohol and some people that's drugs. And for some people that is food. Mm -hmm. And 
it's enjoyable to go out to eat. We like to go out to eat. It's just what we do. It's part of our, we just enjoy having someone else cook for us. Like I will still go to Wendy's. I still go to McDonald's. I'll still leave work, go out for lunch, sit there with my salad at McDonald's and enjoy it and feel happy about that. And I, and I share it with people and I say like, there are quick keto fixes for you when you're out on the road and I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. Um, saying that you can go there and do that because I think for a lot of people it's really necessary when you know if you're a hockey mom and you're at tournaments all weekend and you're away from home like what do you do mm -hmm. there are resources and options for you out there um, and that that aren't bad I mean I go to pita pit and it's spinach and a little bit of tomato and some cucumber and some sprouts and there's nothing bad there yeah you know it's all fresh whole foods even their chicken has no like additives hmm. And then you get some Caesar dressing on it and you're looking at like 10 net carbs in a bowl. Yeah. You know, so I like the fact that there are options out there for people. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely an addiction that that high carb, high fat food. You know, people love that. They eat it. They feel it, it probably brings them back to their childhood too. Mm -hmm. going out to eat with their family. The, there's there's definitely an emotional thing when it comes to eating out as well. It's not just the food. Sure. Yeah. Well, and maybe the um, the brain chemistry changes, you know, because all that flood of, of glucose is going to affect norepinephrine and dopamine and all, right. all that sort of stuff. So, so maybe it's, um, but it's funny that we kind of look to, and I'm not a proponent of drugs or anything like that, but we yeah. poo-poo drug, drugs and gambling and sex and all that, but there's so many people that, that like you said, like their vice is food. Yeah. And so we all need to be aware of it. So there's a great book out there by Adam Alter called Irresistible. It's all about actually uh, cell phones and technology mm. and how so many of us are addicted to technology. Yes. Yeah. But he does talk about gambling, drugs, sex, and food as well. So I think if, if folks, if you want to learn a little bit more about behavioral addictions, how to surmount them, and just to be, I think being aware is a good first step. Being aware Always. that like, wow, maybe I am addicted or have this weird relationship, you know. It's half the problem. Yeah. Awesome. So we've covered a lot, Joanna. This has been great. Um, one of the questions I asked you before we started, you know, was like, if there was one or two things that you were doing, uh, maybe that you've changed now that you feel like, gosh, I wish I would have known that earlier. I Whatever. wish I would have known that earlier. Um, yeah. And it was hard for you to come up with, but is there anything that you're like, you know what, or a common problem that people uh, question you on Instagram about and then you solve it for them? I think one of the, the largest things for me that I found was like really key to my success is was my tracking and weighing things. Like I would weigh the food that I was eating. It wasn't just like, oh, I think this is 50 grams of almonds, you know, which people are overestimating, right? I get a lot of people that say that they're not, you know, they're not losing weight, but that's because they're just eating there's a Literally. lot of uninformed people out there. It's even they find out what some keto foods are, so they'll eat some of the keto foods, but then they're also eating like high carb foods at the same time, which is like just a disaster yeah. for your body. It's like, well, I'm partially keto. And it's like, you can't be partially <laughs> keto. You right. either are or you aren't. Um, I'm trying to think of any other things. Like fasting? I know you said you, you at first did a lot of time restricted feeding, 16 hour fast every day. How, yeah. how important was that? Very important. Um, it was mostly important for my lifestyle because when I woke up in the morning, I didn't have to get myself fed plus my children. I could just worry about them. They're not keto, so my house is filled with non-keto. Like, they'll still eat stuff that I don't feel really good about, which is like that's sort of my struggle now is trying to, now that we're kind of figured out, trying to improve the food that my kids are eating. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so being able to wake up and not have to eat until lunchtime and to be able to take the, four, I was eating 1,400 calories when I was losing weight, so to be able to eat those 1,400 calories over two meals and like a snack versus three meals throughout the day, it kind of just allowed you like a bigger salad because yeah. I eat a lot of salads. So when you have all your calories that you can eat in an eight hour window versus a 12 hour window, yeah. it was just like larger, Comparison. more enjoyable meals. Yeah. And then sometimes if I'm busy and I was like, I'm going shopping at the mall, like I used to go to the mall and be like, oh, mm. is it lunchtime yet? Like yeah. I used to go there. And now it's like, I don't got time for that. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to, cause I'm not even hungry and I'm just gonna keep shopping. I'm gonna keep burning this fat. And then when I get home, I'm gonna get like a big steak and I'm just gonna enjoy like a really big calorie dense meal and, it, and it's okay. So I find that people are always like, oh, you're starving yourself, and they don't really understand it. Um, but it's like, you're not, you're still getting all your calories in. Mm -hmm. And I actually get that a lot from people. They're like, oh, well, I'm a nurse and I'm busy and I just, I don't eat all my calories and it doesn't matter. And I'm like, you are hurting your body. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason why you have set macros that you need to follow every day. Cause I find a lot with like intuitive eating, 
people can be very, very... It's not really, we're irrational beings, right? So it can be emotionally yeah, influenced. It can be emotionally influenced. And yeah. I find that like you're being unhealthy sometimes. So for me, tracking was always, I definitely would have under eight if right. I was saying I was intuitively eating. I know a lot of people find tracking like they'll be like, oh, that's so restrictive or it's such a limiting mindset. But for me, it was like, no, like if I don't make sure I get, and a lot of the times it was that I was at a thousand calories. And at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I've got 400 more calories to eat. Mm. What can I eat? That was a lot of the days, especially in the beginning. Mm. Now that I've lost a lot of the body weight, I found that I need to like up my fat more than before. Because I was always like eat fat till satiated. Like I always ate enough protein, if not going over. But the fat always just kind of fell wherever it fell. And now that I find I don't have as much fat on my body I am getting more hunger cues than I was before. Oh, to have more dietary fat. Yeah, to get, to get more fat into my body. So, you know, there's all these little things. It's never ending. Yeah, You're never somewhere. done with keto. And like, I definitely never feel like an expert. I mean, I've been doing it for so long and I still feel like there's so much to learn. And there's all these little experiments that you can kind of do on your body to mm -hmm. try and see like, well, how does that make me feel if I do bump up my fat enough? Or, you know, when I up my calories by 400 calories a day, when I started working, I was like, 100% I'm gaining weight. Yeah. I mean, I had that same mindset that every other woman has that they're that they're um, going to get fat if they eat so many calories. But for me, it was like, no, you're not going to grow your muscles if you don't eat enough calories. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to make the small changes and see how it affects you, how it affects your your mood or even your brain. Totally. But that's interesting. Like uh, that, that was my next question about with the exercise, you know, now that um, how do you get enough and, and trying to find that happy medium so that you're putting on muscle, but you're not gaining fat. And so I think, but the natural buffer there that exercise affords you a little bit more fudge room because right. you are burning off calories and you're more metabolically, fat, you know, fat yeah. adapted. So yeah, yeah, so I even eat the higher calories like on my off days. So now I'm just 1800 calories every single day, regardless if I'm eating because, you know, you continue to burn and I never gained any weight from doing that. And yeah. I thought for sure I was going to. And I never knew about that reverse dieting, you know, like where you increase your calories slowly. Mm -hmm. I just did it overnight. I don't know. That's probably a bad thing I heard, but it's what I ended up doing. I, I don't, yeah. I'm not an expert in all of that sort of thing, but um, yeah, so I was able to eat more, but now I actually noticed a little bit of issues with my short-term memory. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, from eating more? No, yeah. like um, just recently. Like hmm. if I'm at the gym and we're counting reps, I, I cannot even tell you where I'm at. Like if I didn't have Nate there to tell me where I was at, mm -hmm. I totally lose where I'm at. Or like if I'm trying to record like a scripted video or something, it's very difficult for me, especially if I get distracted. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I need MCT oil or something, but uh, my, I find that I, the short term memories go Starting in. to know something. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. yeah quarantine, uh, ginkgo might help with that. Fasting. Um, some high intensity interval training. Gosh. Oh, you know what might really help? Uh, do you do any sauna therapy? What is it? Sauna therapy. No, so just I heat stress. So that. heat and cold stress can oh. really help with short term memory as oh, well. Cool. Um, and a great book. We just actually interviewed him on the podcast, Max Lugavere, the book Genius Foods. So he, uh, he's been studying brain health and made this documentary. Yeah. So I'll, I'll cool. put the link in the show notes and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Joanna, this was great. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Um, so you're pretty active on, on Instagram and YouTube. If you want to just mention again, keto. Yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram at keto in Canada. It's all one word. And I am on also on YouTube at keto in Canada. I'm on Facebook and I have a website. Uh, I am keto in Canada.com. Awesome. Well, keep up the great work. This is really inspiring. Thank They're changing you. a lot of lives that. out there. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this discussion. Definitely follow Joanna at keto in Canada. I'll put the links below this video. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more good content coming up. So catch up with you soon. Yeah, thank you. Cheers.